Hey, hey, welcome in today, guys. Got a new project for you, but project I wanted to let you guys know hit down below, hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit the subscribe button already. If you have already, thank you. Then hit that like, comment, and share video. Share this video with all your art friends and art people that you know of. But let's get right into the project for today. This project has to do with Adinkra symbols. I really, really love this project. There's so many different um, things that go around. So I'm going to jump around from videos to examples to practice um, to looking at the symbols themselves. Um, so bear with me a little bit. This video might be a little bit longer than my usual videos, but I'm going to try to cut it down quick. It's actually a really, really simple project in itself, but there's just so much stuff to go around. And I definitely like to hit on the history of Adinkra symbols too. So I usually start out with that by giving them a video video as always I love videos and in my I like class. this video just because it actually goes through the culture and kind of history of the symbols and what the what the purpose of them is so I'll sneak peek a little bit of the video it shows them on the cloth shows them how they make the dye for it um, from tree bark and goes through some of that process on that video and then the other parts there's a couple parts with the textiles and the symbols of how they make them and just really does a good job of going in depth on how they make and the process of that. So I'll give you a little sneak peek on that one. Shows them on the claws. And the cool thing, the thing that I like the best is actually how they put them on this fabric and how they make it very, very precise and very efficient also. Um, so that's okay, that part. Have them pick their two favorite ones. And then on that sheet of paper, they'll do some practice on those two favorite ones sheet of paper they'll do their two favorite ones whichever ones that they really like out of this and as they get better at that and actually start painting those so whichever ones that they pick um, they'll start the painting process but then they also do a little bit of um, practice with the painting techniques because it's not okay just to be able to draw this and I do this in first and second grade I've done it before um, but it's a good practice for drawing I guess more block or bubble letters, which is really, really good, and painting with detail. So that's a couple good techniques and tips that I get in this project is having a little bit more detail with the painting. So I have them practice writing their name in painting and kind of doing some symbols and just kind of some doodles almost. Sometimes I have them use this brush. Sometimes I have them use a really, really small brush because um, some of the symbols will have some pretty fine detail on them. So that's a good practice for that. Um, and then on their symbols is actually making the symbols, once they learn in pencil, how to make the symbols a little bit thicker besides just being able to draw a symbol, you know, like, then actually being able to fill that in and turn it almost into like block or bubble letters. And a lot of them know how to do block and bubble letters, but and that, and that definitely helps. Um, if you don't know how to do block and bubble letters, you can click down below in the link and I'll add a link on how to do block and bubble letters because that's an important process where usually I do that in kindergarten so they get that out of the way. So that's this is kind of a good refresher. If they, so I'm gonna pick one of them. Um, the one I like the best and probably the color that I like the best and find the most um, is this bright kind of red color. But I try to use definitely more um, authentic African colors um, representative of tribal kind of colors is kind of the bright red red, the orange, and the yellow. Um, so up the red for this one. So I'm going to start out with pencil. I'm going to do the knowledge one. So just the kind of four circles with kind of a little dash in between. So I'll start out that and I'll go through it really quick here. All right, so I have mine done in pencil. Now I'm gonna go in with the paint. Um, I have these little circular kind of clay, little circles of paint that work really, really good for this. They can just kind of dip their brush in there. Not that it has to be soaking wet, so they can kind of tap it out just to make sure it's not soaking wet. But then they can take the paint and just kind of wipe it in there and then go right onto the paper. Okay, so I got my first one done, and by the magic of YouTube, 
All right, so there it is, the final product. A um, couple of little tips as I was going through that I thought would help help you also. Taking my smaller brush to get some of those details to kind of clean it up in the end. And clearly the smaller brush worked really, really good for writing knowledge on the bottom. And then taking that and framing it on there to finish our product. As so always, again, I am Mr. Shooty. This is Mr. Shooty's art class, and we will see you later.